In this segment, we're going to be talking about mallet percussion instruments. We're going to cover some of the characteristics of the instruments and also basic care and maintenance. All keyboard percussion instruments are laid out in the same way as a piano. So the naturals are down here and the accidentals are up here. On most keyboard percussion instruments, a string runs through the bars that allows you to suspend the bars on a frame. Now, on all keyboard percussion instruments, there's a sweet spot. That's the best place to play the bar to get the best sound possible. On most keyboard percussion instruments, it's going to be in the center of the bar above the resonator. Another good spot to play is on the edge of the bar. It's especially helpful if you're playing fast passages where you need to go between the naturals and the accidentals. You want to avoid playing on what's known as the nodal spot. The nodal spot is the area of the bar where the string is running through the bar. As you can hear, there's a big difference in the quality of sound when you're playing on the center of the bar versus playing on the nodal spot. Let's talk about a few maintenance points that apply to all keyboard percussion instruments. If you have a cover for your instruments, it's a great idea to use it when you're not playing the instrument. The cover will protect the bars and will keep the instrument sounding great. Also, it's important to remember that a keyboard percussion instrument, just like any other percussion instrument, is not a table. So don't ever set anything on the keyboard percussion instrument. You also want to dust the instrument regularly and make sure that it's clean and in good working condition. The resonators that are underneath the bars are not hollow tubes. So you also want to check those regularly to make sure that they haven't cl collected any dust or debris, such as pencils or gum wrappers or whatever else. It's also a good idea to regularly check the string. If the string has become frayed or it looks like it's about to break, you need to replace it. You don't want it breaking during a performance. If you need to replace the string, you can use parachute cord or just contact your manufacturer for a replacement string. You also want to regularly check these metal posts. These metal posts are what suspend the bars with the string. If the instrument's not cared for properly, the post might have become bent. And if that's the case, the post might be actually deadening the bar while you're playing. So you'll want to take a pair of pliers and very carefully bend the post back into place. If the post is broken off, you'll need to replace it. All of these posts have a rubber sleeve around them. That's very important because that's what keeps the bar from vibrating against the metal post. If this rubber sleeving is looking like it's starting to get dry or cracked, or if it's missing, you'll need to replace that as well. You'll also want to regularly check the frame to make sure that there's not any rattling while you're playing. If you're hearing a rattling sound while you're playing, check the frame. Check any of the screws or bolts or any of the other parts that might have become loose. Tighten them down. If that doesn't work, try applying some moleskin or tape to stop the rattle. Also, check the wheels regularly to make sure that they're in good working order. Most wheels should have wheel stops or wheel locks, and you'll want to make sure that those are on while you're playing so that the instrument's not moving around. But be sure to take them off before you start moving the instrument. You also want to regularly check for cracked or damaged bars. Sometimes an entire keyboard instrument will sound great with the exception of one or two notes, which are dead sounding. If that's the case, that probably means those bars are cracked or damaged. If you do have cracked or damaged bars, contact your music store with the make and model of your instrument, and they'll be able to order replacement single bars for you. Caring and maintaining your instruments is an important part of being a percussionist. As percussionists, we're often playing on instruments that we don't own personally. If that's the case, we have to take care of those instruments just the same as we would take care of any of our own personal property. In a way, each of these percussion instruments belongs to all of us. We want it to sound great for us and to sound great for the next player as well. So make sure that you take the necessary steps to take care of your instruments, to maintain them. And if you do so, those instruments will sound great for a lifetime.